Hi, I'm Andrew Bates, and I'm the Head of Private Banking here at Nedbank Private Wealth, looking after the Middle East and Far East, based out of our representative office in Dubai. Today, I'm joined by my colleague and good friend, Chirag Patel, to discuss lending services to clients that reside outside of the UK, the trends that we're seeing, and the products, solutions, and services that we can afford them here at Nedbank Private Wealth. Chirag, welcome. Thank you for having me, Andy. You're very welcome. So we've got to cover a few things today. Um, what I'm going to start with at the minute is what trends are you seeing in the, in the, in the market? Um, what are people coming to us or coming to you as the head of credit specialists in the London team? What are they looking for? What are they asking for? Um, we, usually we see a mixed bag, but over the last two years, we've definitely seen an influx of expats buying in the UK, mm -hmm. whether that's down to the dollar being strong against the pound or them having surplus wealth and funds to invest in the UK. Or it's the expats that some of them, you know, sending their kids back over here for education and buying properties for them to buy, um, live in, sorry. Um, so we've seen a mixed bag. But what we have seen in this year, you know, the, we're early into the year, we've seen that trend continue. Mm -hmm. um, that has been our biggest source of new lending inquiries. So it's obviously a hot market. Um, we've also seen a, a mixed bag of purchases. You know, it's residential owner-occupied properties as well as investment properties. Okay, and that brings me on to my next point. So um, we've helped internationally mobile clients uh, for a long time buying properties in, in, in the UK, but you just touched on a good point there of people buying for their own personal use or perhaps their children um, uh, and those buying from investment purposes. What, what would you say is, is the sort of mix? I would say... Percentage -wise? Yeah, percentage. I would say 70% is investment. Okay. Around 30% is for own occupation. Mm -hmm. um, what we've seen is... Um, a lot of individuals from overseas, whether it's Hong Kong, whether it's the GCC area, yeah. um, purchasing residential homes as second homes. You know, so you're coming over here, they've still got family over here, um, coming on a irregular basis, but want their own hub. Um, on the investment side, um, you know, that's still a really good market. We've seen that, you know, the uptake of um, properties for investment purposes um, continue. Um, it doesn't look like that market has been hit as much as the local markets yeah. you know um i don't think the tax rules the the restrictions um as well as all the changes in the in the investment field um has affected them as much especially the wealthy clients from the gcc and uh, the rest of the world yeah so uh yeah and point you made you made there which we've seen a lot a lot of times is people buying properties for their own use but not living in it on a full-time basis so that sort of pierre de terre yeah. type arrangement um and again there's Mortgages, as we know, you're the specialist, mm -hmm. of course, uh, come with different sets of rules and regulations, whether yep. someone's going to let that out, occupy it, holiday let. And, and this is something that we provide solutions for across the range. Yeah, so, um, you know, we've got the tools. We're agile enough to um, structure something to satisfy one's needs. Um, but we have to be conscious of the regulatory framework around that. Um, so if they're purchasing for own occupation, we do have to, you know, delve into their details in a lot more depth just to be sure that we are satisfying all the requirements we as a bank have to adhere to. Um, on the investment property side, you know, we can get, we can be flexible. We can be a bit more nimble um, in structuring deals, but we have the tools to, you know, satisfy clients on both sides. Yeah, and, and regulation is obviously very, very important. Uh, but the big thing that we've always preached, uh, and, and I know I hear you say a lot is, Words like acting as a responsible lender. Absolutely. Um, you know, putting yourself in those clients' shoes. Are we helping them do the right thing? Uh, because we can all be order takers. Yep. Um, but our job uh, uh, in the whole wider business is to advise our clients and yep. advise them with integrity. Um, so you know, having that range of service, yep. where we can look at those client needs. You know, I think really helps us stand stand out in the market. I totally agree, and uh, I think the key there is being advisors to the clients, right? Um, also speaking to our clients, their advisors, their family offices, our internal wealth of experience, whether it's wealth planning, um, your team out in um, the Middle East, we've, we've got a wide breadth of knowledge and a wide breadth of tools we can call upon. Internationally, what I used to see a lot of was people were focused on LTV, the yeah. loan to value. What's the highest loan to value I could get? And maybe that was sometimes to help them offset more taxes. Yeah. Um, is that still the case or are people focusing more on the affordability of things now? Because we've been through a period of interest rates at stubbornly low periods for 10, 12 years. 
a lot of people, the borrowers, haven't experienced rates that we're seeing today. Exactly. Um, I think I think we've got we've got clients on both ends of the spectrum. All right. So we've got the young up and coming uh, clients that are just getting into their career, generating their wealth. They tend to be focused more on the LTV. The issue we face there is a lot of them um, are at the start of their career on that upward trajectory, so haven't reached the key potential that they could um, in their earnings. Then we've got our, you know, our legacy clients, the wealthier clients, where affordability is not really key, but the LTV might be due to the advice they've been, um, you know, that they've been given by their uh, advisors. Um, so we see both sides. I think I think it's a personal choice, really, um, whether they. Well, when I say personal choice, whether they want to borrow more than they have to and pay more interest. Mm -hmm. well, number two, can they really afford to? That's that's the younger generation. And then they have to weigh up the pros and cons, right? Often clients can buy in a multitude of vehicles. So we could buy in our own names, joint names, a joint borrower, sole proprietor, mm -hmm. or indeed three companies. And I know that we provide a range of services to suit them all. Yep. Um, and again, whilst we're not the tax advisors, they are taxed in different ways. These international clients that you're seeing buying properties for investment purposes, what's the current trend or percentage of people buying in their own name or, or in companies? I think historically we've seen more purchases from international clients being some sort of vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's dropped off over the last few years as the benefits, the costs involved have increased. Um, going forward, I think it will all come down to the advice they get from, again, their advisors, the, the advice they seek from us possibly. Um, so I can't see that changing too much. What we do find is in the hot, you know, the top end of the high net worth space, in the ultra high net worth space, we see a lot more structures, a lot more vehicles. Um, in the core market is predominantly personal names. That's what we're seeing. Okay, thank you. But yourself and your team are, are perfectly set up and structured as we are as a business to cater for both. Absolutely. Um, we can cater for personal, we can cater for vehicles registered in certain jurisdictions, um, in our core jurisdictions being Isle of Man, Jersey, um, UK, Mauritian Trust, BVI Trust, you know, that's that's our core market. Um, and we can look at various structures. We have, we have the capability, we have the knowledge in order to structure various vehicles. So many lenders in the UK are the UK high street banks uh, who don't often operate in the international market. Obviously, being a, a boutique private wealth manager that has onshore and offshore, we work with clients from both people who are resident and domiciled in the UK and those that live overseas. Yep. Is this something that uh, you think is a unique sales point of ours? Absolutely. I think um, with your team specifically out in the Middle East, um, with our international employee base, let's call it, I think we are different. Um, we're capable of looking at international wealth, international income. Um, we're a close-knit team, so we're quite agile. I like to use that word, we're nimble. Um, and I think that is a unique selling point for us uh, we, that differentiates us from our key competitors in the market. One of, one of the things that I've noticed from being an expatriate for, for over 20 years now and, and in various locations is I meet people who have moved out to the Middle East now where I'm residing. Um, and the move that they're taking is, is the biggest thing in their life. And they perhaps haven't thought that they needed to tell their mortgage lender. And then maybe with the UK High Street Bank, for instance, in the moment they notify that bank that they now live overseas, either one or two things happen. That they're told that they would need to repay or refinance yeah. uh, because they don't service clients who live overseas. Or they may um, put some sort of penal uh, additional lending margin in there. Um, is, is this something that, in, in your years of experience, you, you see happening quite a lot? Absolutely. You know, um, clients move, right? They move globally. They move multiple times. Um, I think we have strong relationships with our clients. We keep in contact with them. Um, we speak to them on a regular basis. Um, so I like to think that our clients are different, okay, that we are different. Um, it's more of a personal relationship. But absolutely, we're there to be able to assist them as and when they make these lifestyle changes or move jurisdictions, and we've got all the capabilities to assist them along the way. Okay, well, that just leaves me to thank you, Chirag. A pleasure, as ever. Thank you for sharing your insights on the lending market, both nationally and internationally, uh, and providing us a, you know reasonable insights as to how we, uh, with your team, 
help our clients. Thank, so you, thank you very much. Thank you for having me and look forward to speaking soon.